to do with birth defects of things like folic acid, preventing spina bifida and all other neurotube defects. Uh, we'd known that in the animal By the way, I looked this up when I heard this a few years ago, but I, but I didn't look it all up. I looked up more now. It's all true. You're one of the only people to ever beat them, and you beat them over and over again. So much of the health freedom we have today is because you took action. Well, that's true, and I thank you for bringing that up. Um, and uh, again, I appreciate your support on that. Uh, you know, we never ask anybody for any money, but it was just kind of the right thing to do. And we knew we could prevail in, in federal court. And most other people were afraid of repercussions. They say, well, the government's going to go after you if you do that. And I said, well, you know, let them come. Um, what are you going to do, put me in jail? I mean, what else can they do? And so they, I guess they could take shots at me. But, but uh, this was so terrible that all these kids were being born with these birth defects like spina bifida, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, heart defects, um, missing limbs, um, hernias, uh, every kind of facial thing you can think of, cleft palate, cleft lip, um, these are totally preventable. Cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, both of those are not only preventable, Alex, but are even fixable after the baby's born. In fact, um, uh, we actually, I received an award uh, last year in 2011, an international award uh, for uh, discovering the cause, prevention, and cure of cystic fibrosis. Actually discovered it 35 years ago. It's actually a little belated uh, reward, if you would, uh, uh, recognition, but I finally got it out there. We're going to have a lot more coming up here so the general public will realize we can actually prevent and reverse. Uh, cystic fibrosis, we're actually able to reverse the genetic markers so we know it's not a genetic disease. By the way, I want to just interrupt. I, I said I wasn't because I was saying Paraguay, Uruguay. I always get them confused. It was Paraguay. My dad goes down to Belize. He goes down to Central South America once a year as part of a group he's with to give free health care. Mm -hmm. Because that's what doctors, as you know, that's not something yeah. special nowadays, even though people don't do it, that you were taught in, 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 in medicine to do it. My dad's a dentist and oral surgeon. Mm -hmm. And when he was down for the first time ever in what they call the Green Hell, Paraguay, uh, he was down there in the landlocked country. And the Amish are the only ones that built the country up in the north. They turned the desert green. But they have found and discovered, and like the one of the main leaders is, uh, uh, of the country, who's Amish, uh, has discovered that the children were becoming, you know, being born mentally retarded or being born with deformities because they didn't have minerals. And they've got these little clinics where they just give them mineral packs and suddenly it's reversing that so so sure you've you've helped discover this foster so much of it but it turns out all over the world this is a revolution where people are discovering that well it's like china uh, finding out their peasants so many of them were having all uh, deformities or, or 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 birth defects because they weren't getting minerals i mean this is this is hiding in plain view is my point because my dad uh, 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 about a year and a half ago, he's like, minerals, I get the minerals I need. Yeah, I know there's some deficiencies, but I grow stuff in the garden now. What I, you know, I don't need that longevity stuff. My mom started taking it and had big results. But then he went down to Paraguay, uh, or Uruguay. What's the landlocked one? It was Paraguay. He was there when the guy threw the hand grenade uh, in at the soccer game and blew people up. My dad actually saw that. It was in the BBC. He told me about it when he got back. I went and looked it up, and there it was. But, but the point is, he was down there and witnessed this for himself. And, and they found out, they said, oh, all these street children, they're mentally retarded because, because they've been sniffing glue. Turned out that wasn't what it was. They weren't getting minerals. That's exactly right, Alex. Your dad's a very true observer. And I'm um, sure that was genetically passed on to you. Um, and, of course, uh, mustard dystrophy is another one. And here's a case, and I had, actually had this confirmed two days ago. My theory was that we'd been sending, actually we'd been sending Jerry Lewis for two years um, uh, emails and hard copy of the kids we're curing of mustard dystrophy. And last year, Jerry Lewis was not um, the host on, on the telethon for the first time in 22 years. Nobody said anything. It's just Jerry's not here. That's it. Uh, he was sent. He was literally sent on a cruise so nobody could ask him anything. And they say, oh, he's sick. Well, no, even on a deathbed, he'd be saying, take care of Jerry's kids, right? And it turns out that they fired him because he brought all my data to the medical committee, and they said, hey, Jerry, this is just months before the telethon, and we won't make any money if people realize there's a cure, so you're fired. They fired Jerry Lewis because they brought him, he brought the medical committee my data, and they just made a clean sweep. They fired everybody in the Mustard History Foundation who is loyal to Jerry Lewis, 
just in the last couple of months. And this, this year, they're only going to have a two-hour telethon instead of a 24-hour telethon. And it's all going to be pre-recorded so nobody can interrupt it. By the way, this is a big news story, and I have no doubt it's true. But, but, but I mean, how did, you, how did you learn about this? Because we need to get a story out on this. Okay. Well, I actually theorized that because we had been sending him all this data. And his personal assistant said how wonderful this was, and Jerry was excited. And I said, look, we're not looking for any money from the Mustard History Foundation. We were looking for uh, just Jerry, the, give him the opportunity to make the announcement. After all, you know, everybody in their own mind knows that Mustard History kids are Jerry's kids. And I thought it was only fair, even though we had made the discovery, we thought it was only fair with all the efforts he'd put forth for 22 years, it was only fair that he was given the opportunity to make the announcement that the cure had been found. And so we'd been sending him all this data, and then suddenly he's fired. And so it had to have sense, so I guessed it. Well, just a couple of days ago, I called uh, his personal assistant and asked, I said, okay, I'm theorizing this. I've been saying this. This is, this is my belief over the years. And she said, yes, you're quite correct. And she was the one who volunteered that the Mustard History Foundation had fired all of um, uh, his uh, uh, which supporters of the Mustard History Foundation, if they even look like they like Jerry Lewis, they fired them all, and the, the telephone. Wow, so oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You noticed that you were in contact giving him info. He was suddenly gone. Yeah. You called her back, and she confirmed that. That's correct. Good Lord. Yeah, so I've, I've talked to her many times. I've probably talked to her a dozen times over the last year, uh, again, saying, look, we're not looking for any money from the Mustard History Foundation. We just want to give Jerry the opportunity because we're going to have a huge announcement coming out here uh, in a couple of months. Uh, cystic fibrosis announcements are coming out as we speak uh, very quickly in the next couple of days. Uh, this, uh, we know the cause for engine cure. We've actually known it for 35 years, but I'm starting to get the reversal of the genetic markers so there's no doubt about it and these are independent hospitals on hospital letterhead they're freaking out because they couldn't believe it was possible and they retested it and the retests were better than the original test and so they're very excited about this and that's for cystic fibrosis now mustard dystrophy is the same thing and uh, even kids who've been in wheelchairs for 20 years they get up and walk kids who have had it for two or three or four years who can't stand up longer than a minute or two they fall down are now playing basketball and they'll knock you down to make a point. But that's just like scurvy. I, I was even yeah. reading in mainline literature that a lot of times the hospitals won't test for nutritional deficiencies. Your teeth are falling out, your skin's falling apart. They don't ask, hey, you're drinking nothing but Coca-Cola's and eating Doritos all day or eating Cheetos. You're starving to death. It's not, explain empty calories versus nutrients. Well, empty calories, as you point out, Alex, are like, um, um, bread that, uh, and grain that's actually grown in soil that only has three minerals. And as you pointed out earlier, plants only need three minerals, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. Everything else the plant needs, they get from the air and they get from uh, the sun's energy. Everything else they need is amazing that plants are able to do this. And so we need 60. So if you're eating a pretty good slice of organically grown bread that's um, multi-grain bread, you, you could be 57 minerals short because a plant only needs three, and you can't tell by looking at it whether it has three or 18 or 12 or 10 or six or, you, or 20 or 40, you can't tell by looking at it because it only needs three. We need 60. And so we're, you know, medical doctors only have 30 minutes of nutritional training and 14 years of medical school, and they don't get a test on it, so most of the time they're off in the bathroom smoking pot when that 30 minutes is given because they know they're not gonna get tested on it. And then they teach dietitians and nutritionists what they know about nutrition, so 50% of nothing is not much. Where in veterinary medicine, nutrition is everything because we don't have insurance. And that's the reason why we, we've cured 900 different diseases in animals. Think about it, Alex. 60 years ago, an old dog was 8 years old. Today, an old dog is 25. We've eliminated 900 different diseases in dogs that still plague humans. We've eliminated every birth defect you can name by putting all these vitamins and minerals in oh, the dog. Oh, let me stop you. I bought, because I saw that, that we had this, so we went to the vet the next time, and, or well, well, one time to the vet, the other time to the pet smart place. Mm -hmm. None of the toothpaste for dogs had sodium fluoride in it, and I meant to bring that today and show you. Well, why don't we need the poison sodium fluoride for dogs? Because, <laughs> well, a dog only needs about 300 micrograms, about a third of a milligram of, of fluoride to keep his bones hard. We only need one milligram. Well, between what the government puts in the water, between what you find in toothpaste and mouthwash, and the dentist paint the kid's teeth with it, and you might get a little bit, if you're lucky or unlucky, depending on how you look at it, get some natural fluoride out of your own drinking water, you could wind up with 25 milligrams of fluoride 
which again can be, in fact, uh, toxic. And so we're just getting too much of a good thing in that case. You only need one milligram to have healthy bones and teeth. And we know that in dogs. We control everything in dogs where we don't control everything in humans. That's my next question. Some of the products, and I've noticed some of the other elite products out there as well, not just longevity, have tiny amounts of arsenic and things. And again, I hate to talk about my dad, but I remember when, you know, going back like 15 years ago, I'd be talking about, about fluoride and arsenic in the water. And, and, and he'd say, there's too much of it, but you need some of that or you die. And he'd explain how for, for chemical processes or to even be able to upload, to, to use a layman term, all the vitamins and minerals are together, that those trace elements somehow allow the unlocking of it or the bridging of the use and cell function. Now, now I know you're an expert in this, did the tens of thousands of autopsies over a decade, you know, for the federal government in, in animal testing and, and, and in zoological... And in uh, 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 specimens that have died. So explain to me in scientific terms what I just said. Is that accurate? Or explain why some of the products do have very small amounts of things that people would call toxic. Well, um, actually, arsenic we've known is an essential nutrient, just like calcium and copper and zinc um, and phosphorus. Uh, we've known it since 1947. Um, it actually prevents certain types of leukemia, can actually cure, arsenic can cure certain types of leukemia uh, because uh, leukemia is an arsenic deficiency. And then uh, you have something like cadmium, which is thought of to be toxic, uh, yet it actually can take the place of zinc. There's 50,000 zinc dependent enzymes that work in your body every second as we're alive. And if you're deficient in zinc, you should be happy that there's cadmium in our products because it takes the place, uh, fully takes the place of zinc when it's missing and will actually activate the zinc dependent enzymes. Then uh, people all get all freaked out about aluminum because um, it was a, um, what should I say, a, a terrible, incorrect, terribly incorrect study that was done on aluminum when they said aluminum has something to do with Alzheimer's disease. Aluminum has nothing to do with Alzheimer's disease, but that false um, report came out from a very bad study where they were taking slices of human brain that had uh, Alzheimer's disease, and they put the slices on an aluminum tray and they put them in an acid stain to stain the cells. Well, the acid stain took the aluminum out of the tray and impregnated the brain tissue with it. So when they tested the brain tissue, it had lots of aluminum. Oh, there is a cause of Alzheimer's disease. Well, then two weeks later, a very clever Frenchman took that same, very same brain, took similar slices from the same brain with Alzheimer's disease, put it on a glass tray and there was no aluminum in there. And they came out and said that was an incorrect report, but everybody got, uh, Dr. Blaylock, who, as you know, is a top retired brain surgeon, developed many of the surgeries. He's concurred with some of the analysis you've had. He says it is, it is a continually inflamed brain from all the toxins, chemicals, MSG, but more importantly, the statin drugs literally are disintegrating the brain. That's what he says. What do you say? I say he's exactly correct. I've been saying this since 1971, Alex. Alzheimer's disease is a physician-caused disease. Uh, you get put on a um, um, cholesterol-restricted diet. You're eating egg beaters instead of eggs. You're eating boneless, skinless chicken breast. You're eating tofu instead of red meat. You're eating margarine instead of butter and cream. Uh, you're getting on cholesterol-restricted drug, uh, excuse me, cholesterol-lowering drugs like statin drugs. You're going to get Alzheimer's disease as sure as there's gravity. And so every baby boomer who was born between 1946 and 1964 will get Alzheimer's disease if 